Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here. Welcome to another episode of Days of Night. And today I'm going to be testing one of my oldest cameras, the Pentax K1000. This is the first film SLR that really launched my passion for film photography. As you may or may not know, I actually started out digital. I was an early adopter of digital photography way back in 2004 when uh, cameras <laughs> were like three megapixels unless you were spending a couple grand. And then in 2008, I got a Canon AF 35ML, which I still have. And it was great, but it was loud and it gave me no control whatsoever. So I was gifted a Pentax K1000. So I'm only the second owner of this camera. It was barely used, basically left in storage since 1981. And I shot the ever living snot out of this camera for a while and I had a full line of lenses. I was all about Pentax Prime lenses. And you know, you change and you evolve and you adopt other equipment and you have less time for your older stuff. And I sort of became a minimalist when it came to uh, equipment, at least I'd like to think so. And uh, for that reason, I ended up selling most of my Pentax lenses. I still have a couple though. I've got a 35 millimeter f2.8 that I bought brand new. And I've got a Tamron 28 to 200 sort of all purpose lens that's actually an autofocusing lens, but still fits this camera. And I'm gonna be shooting with that today. Here she is, still in what I think to be fantastic condition. But like I said, I haven't shot this thing in a couple of years at least. And that is why I will be double checking my meter with the Raveni Labs light meter on the top here. I'm gonna use both. I may even use my handheld meter if I feel like uh, the situation arises where my handheld meter will give me better results. Now it's just a matchstick uh, inside the viewfinder that basically levels out when it thinks there's a proper exposure. Uh, so there's no way to know if it's exact, but it will at least tell me if I'm in the ballpark. And like I said before, I've got this Tamron 28 to 200 all-purpose lens. It is a, I believe, 3.5 to 5.6. 3.8 to 5.6 and it's just a beautiful lens it does sort of everything and nothing at the same time i thought about just using my 35 millimeter but i don't i don't feel like being that restricted today i just want to have everything and a lot of people don't like the all-purpose lenses because of the optics on it but you know, now as far as film goes, I will be shooting with a roll of Agfa Vista Plus 200 film. Basically, Agfa Vista Plus 200 is just re rolled Fuji Color. Now, when I checked the barcode, it was listed as Fuji Color C200 and Superia. I don't know if that's the same film or not. Perhaps it is. I will check in post production and display whether it is or isn't. Though this film is expired, it has been frozen since new, so I will be shooting at box speed today. You know, I had a little trouble trying to figure out where I should go today. When you go out and you shoot a couple times a week and you're also um, videotaping yourself, I'm so old, I say videotape still, um, you sort of start to run out of places to go because you want to keep things interesting on camera here. And I want to thank everyone on the Patreon Discord for telling me to go to Chinatown today. We had a discussion about what we do when we're in a creative slump, and that's what we came up with. We came up with, uh, I should go down to Chinatown again. Uh, and it makes sense. I mean, just because you've been to a place once doesn't necessarily mean that you can never go there again, even if you're making YouTube episodes like I am. So with all that being said, let's get started. Okay, first things first, I've got a couple of LR44 batteries here. One is going to go into my Raveni Labs light meter, and the other is going to go into the camera. Fantastic, I can confirm that the matchstick light meter in the Pentax K1000 is moving up and down when I shine light on it. Next up is to pop one into the Raveni Labs light meter. It would appear as though my Raveni Labs light meter is dead. 
I put three different batteries in. I checked the batteries to see if um, they were charged. Yeah, nothing is happening, nothing is coming on. Post-production Azrael here with an update. After speaking with the owner of Reveni Labs and doing a bunch of troubleshooting, he was all ready to take it back under warranty. And then I had a closer look at it. <sighs> the battery was upside down. The battery was upside down. I'm a total moron. The battery was upside down. Gotta say the inside still looks super clean. I will say though the advance feels a little stiff and the shutter doesn't sound super hot. I probably should have done a shutter test like I did last episode, but honestly I just forgot. Taking a bit of a break here, over by this <laughs> funky robot. Um, snapped a couple shots of this, and I compared my camera's light meter with my handheld light meter, and I got the exact same result. 1 1 25th of a second at f5.6 at ISO 200. So I'm pretty happy about that. See here, there's a robot holding a slushy. Maybe it's bubble tea. Could be a slushy, not sure. Anyway, like I said, I snapped a few shots of that and things have been going pretty smooth today. It's minus 15 with the wind chill, but I almost don't believe it because I'm actually, I'm actually a bit warm. So I'm about 15 to 18 shots in and I'm not doubling up too much, uh, just in the case of where I shot at 200 millimeters and I had to go at 125th of a second. Just doubling up in case there's camera shake in one of those shots. But yeah, moving on now. Well, that was fairly uneventful. It was too warm at first, and then this cold wind hit, and oh my God, it was just chilling to the bone. It probably wasn't helping that I was almost sweating at first because I was so warm, and then it got cold, and I mean, you know how that goes. I gotta say, this post-nasal drip underneath here, not a good time either. Things went fairly smoothly though. I think I was worried that there wouldn't be enough to shoot in Chinatown because I've been down here a bunch of times last year. But they put some new artwork up. And not to mention there's some new graffiti up. So that changed things just as much. You might notice in my highlights today that there is a fair amount of graffiti and artwork. And hopefully I transformed it enough to make my own. I didn't just take a scan of the shot. Like I say, if I'm gonna shoot artwork, I wanna make sure I add my own stink to it. I did shoot the whole roll. I did have a minor issue with the advanced lever on the Pentax K1000. I found that when I wound, the lever actually stuck out and I had to push it back. So if there's some advancing issues, I'm not gonna be surprised. But yeah, next time you see me, I'll be in the dark room washing off my negatives. Okie dokie, folks. Stabilizer is done stabilizing. And I am ready to look at this film. Looking good, looking good. Hmm. Even one that I thought was gonna be really underexposed seems to be all right.
yeah, buy the books. Pretty decent. All I got to do now is stick it in some photo flow here and then hang it up to dry. No waiting for you though. Here are today's highlights and my contact sheet. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed those. I got to say today overall exceeded my expectations. First, I'm going to talk a bit about the lens. Then I'm going to talk about my Pentax K1000. And finally, I'll give you my thoughts on the film. I'm starting off talking about the lens because it was the only thing that didn't actually exceed my expectations, but didn't even meet them. Um, I'm, I know I've used this lens before. So I don't know why I didn't notice this in the past. Maybe it's because I've been working with progressively better lenses and cameras. But the amount of vignetting while I was shooting wide was absolutely atrocious. And it only worked out in one shot. And that was the one with the three crosses in the brick wall and the window in the corner. It actually worked out for that shot. But for the rest of the shots, it it made the photos look ugly and the one thing you got to know about me is that my expectations for lenses and sharpness and stuff like that it's pretty low I'm way more concerned about getting a good composition and I feel like if the shot is good enough no one's gonna ask you what kind of camera lens you shot it with that's I, I think that's just the bottom line here though I feel like there are situations where I would be well first off I would not use this for landscape photography whatsoever let's get that out of the way I think a little vignetting might work out for street photography better for drama and stuff like that but these are all just my personal preferences and um, it's just a matter of my taste maybe vignetting would look good in a landscape shot to you and therefore, you should go ahead and pick up one of these Tamron 28 to 200 lenses. Um, but after shooting it today, I don't think I'm going to have any problems selling this thing. And while that may just bring me down to a 35 millimeter for my Pentax, I'm really just keeping the K1000 um, because it has sentimental value. It's my first serious film SLR. I've owned it for. 12 or 13 years now and even if it wasn't working properly I'd probably keep it anyway as a shelf model. Luckily though the camera was in perfect working order. Every time I checked my handheld light meter with the camera itself it gave me the exact reading that I ended up shooting with. So even though it is just a matchstick meter that'll level out 
when you have a proper exposure. When I took my shot and I checked my settings against the handheld meter, it recommended the exact settings I ended up using. Couldn't be happier with those results. Really surprised also that despite the advanced lever being a little sticky and having to push it back, it made no difference in the mechanics of advancing the film. I had perfect spacing throughout my negatives. If you've never shot with a Pentax K1000 before, you really owe it to yourself to, to check it out. If you are new to film photography and you are wondering what film camera to buy, the Pentax K1000 is an incredible learning tool. It's not the fastest. It doesn't have fancy things like exposure compensation or aperture priority or shutter priority. It definitely doesn't have a program mode. Uh, I don't even think mine has a self timer. Nope, no self timer. If you want to learn about exposure and you want to do that through film photography, the trial and error that you will go through from shooting a K1000 is basically, it'll force you to think. It'll force you to slow down. Reading the meter, whether you're over or underexposed, is super simple. Basically, if you're level, you are good to go. And the prime lenses. Pentax prime lenses are nice and sharp and they come at least at a somewhat decent budget compared to some others, say Nikon lenses. The one thing that I don't think enough people talk about with Pentax prime lenses is that the filter thread size is almost consistent throughout the entire line. I had a 35 millimeter, I had a 28 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, and uh, a couple of others, and they all had a 49 filter thread, except I think the 200 millimeter. So you want to save money on filters, that's the way to go, especially considering the size. The bigger the filter, the more you're going to pay. More glass, more money, it makes sense. It also goes without saying that the Pentax K1000 is a super durable camera. Um, I, I heard somebody joke once that it is the camera to bring with you to protests because you can just swing your way out. <laughs> I don't recommend that, but it's a testament to the toughness of the camera itself. It can take a beating and it's still good. The moral of this story is, is that you can't go wrong with the Pentax K1000 because it is the abacus of film cameras. It is bare bones, it gives you only what you need and absolutely nothing else. You can put way more modern lenses on the camera as well. And then if you upgrade to an autofocusing film camera or even a DSLR, you can still use your lenses. Pentax is known for its compatibility. People like to talk about their desert island camera. And uh, you know, I when I was interviewed on Analog Talk, and they asked me what my Desert Island camera was. I believe I said the Nikon FE. And, you know, assuming that I would have to repair the camera myself and I have no repair ability whatsoever, um, I would have to go with the K1000 because it is the least likely to break because it is so simple. You don't even need a battery to operate it. The battery is just for the light meter. Throw me on an island forget the batteries and I can still shoot sunny 16 all day or cloudy 11 if it's cloudy. I hope that gives you some sway one way or another if you were sort of on the fence on whether or not you should get a K1000. Get one. It's great. It's an awesome camera. What are you doing? Go buy one. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's talk about the film. So uh, speaking in terms of my development of the film itself, just the development aspect of it. I did get a little bit of milky streaking on my um, film and I think I just didn't wash it enough. Thankfully though this did not show up in the final images. Also I'm getting some dust issues on one end of the film uh, strip. It's not so much on the other end, just on the top end when I hang it up. And I don't know why that is. I've got it in a drying cabinet. I've got a filter and everything. Um, I can tell you that I always have more trouble uh, having clean negatives when it's color than black and white. And I've never been 100% able to figure out why. But needless to say, 
um, some of the shots uh, at the one end of my film strip were definitely more dusty than the other end. So it's always an uphill battle with dust. This place that I live in is definitely dusty. Not as dusty as my last place, but it still ranks up there. I'm going to have to, I don't know, I'm going to have to suck it up, I guess. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments about that. But let's just talk about the Arista, Arista Vista, the Agfa Vista Plus 200. Right. As I mentioned before, Agfa Vista Plus 200 is just re-rolled Fuji color, and when I checked the barcode, it was listed as either C200 or Superior, and I didn't find out 100% if C200 and Superior were the exact same emulsion, but my leanings were that it wasn't. They were listed as different things when I googled them, and, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but, you know, let's just discuss it as Fuji color in general, and I would say that for this particular role, my expectations were exceeded. The colors came out brilliant and punchy and very cool. Now, I did add some contrast in a lot of my shots, and I did have to make minor color corrections, but that's usually due to the scanner and not the film itself. This film shot like it was brand spanking new, and thanks again to Al for donating it. Al donated a bunch of film last October during a fortnight of film, and everything that he has sent me so far has come out as if it's brand new, no matter if it's been frozen for 10 or 20 years. I can't wait to shoot some of the other more obscure films he sent me, uh, especially this one film I'm thinking about in particular that's actually a couple of decades old, but is color. I've shot Agfa Vista Plus before, and I didn't think too much of it, but I wasn't really a color fan at the time. I've only really sort of accepted color as part of my repertoire since the beginning of 2020 and when I started doing more landscape photography I started shooting the Badlands and I realized that black and white was not going to cut the mustard for my portfolio that I would need to incorporate color if I was going to properly represent this section of land in Alberta. And so that got me thinking more on color. The other thing that got me using color more is I just got Better at it. I got better at developing it. And besides the little bit of dustiness today, as well as with the film that I shot last week, I'm still really happy with the results. I think that there is a place for color. It really changes your brain too. Um, when I think about shooting in black and white, I'm purely thinking about composition and shapes and tones. And I know that word is thrown around a lot, but I do. I think about how much contrast any given scene is going to have. Now when I think in color, I'm thinking about where my eye is going to be drawn based on the colors that I'm presented with in the frame. And that sort of makes me think about composition, but in a completely different way. Something can be really flat in tone, but really punchy in color. And so there are some things that I would consider shooting in color and other things that I would only consider shooting in black and white in certain situations and that sort of thing. Now, I still prefer black and white 100% because I am able to bring it right here in the darkroom and make prints, but that may change too as I'm starting to think I'd like to experiment in printing color. There's not much else to say about the film though. Uh, Agfa Vista Plus is a re-rolled budget film of Fuji Color and budget films are nice and you know they do they do a decent job i don't really know how it does on skin tones i'm not really in a position to be shooting portraits at the moment for obvious reasons i could do self-portraits but i'm pretty pasty i don't think it would be an accurate representation anyway uh yeah so those are my thoughts on the film i think that because there are less and less choices for color these days it lowers the bar I think if you shoot color at all and you do it right and you shoot something beautiful, I think you're going to be happy no matter what. I mean, people lose their minds over Portra, but it's not the end all and be all. And you got to look at the ticket price and your budget and how much you're shooting. And if you're developing it yourself or sending it to the lab, all these things need to be taken into account. 
But yeah, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, perhaps you'll join me on Patreon. Through my Patreon, you'll get things like early access, your name in the credits, and even free prints. I've also opened up a Discord. We're always chatting up a storm there. Come on down. It starts at a dollar. Uh, you could also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic.